Switch Station 32 back for another video. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, if you leave a like and a subscribe, it really helps the channel grow. So let's get into it. We're going to do another weekly news video. And uh, we'll start right off with the Microsoft acquiring Bethesda. The deal finally went through. Everybody was wondering is Bethesda games going to be on Nintendo or they're going to be on the PlayStation? I think it's a little bit more up in the air for Nintendo than it is PlayStation, but. What Phil Spencer said was pretty clear cut, so he said that this was about Game Pass and putting Bethesda first party titles on any console that has Game Pass. So what he's basically saying is if the console don't let Microsoft put Game Pass on it, you're not going to have the exclusive Bethesda games. And I don't mean online. I don't mean the Skyrim, Elder Scrolls online. I don't mean Fallout 76. It means Doom Eternal. It means Fallout. It means Skyrim. It, it means Wolfenstein. All them games, they're not going to be on the PlayStation unless Sony lets Microsoft put Game Pass on there. Now, that'd be awesome. Because then you'd have Game Pass and you'd have all them first party titles plus you'd have the Sony first party titles all on one spot. You'd still have to buy the Sony game. So you get all that first party stuff for free from Microsoft and Bethesda and all their, uh, you'd get Forza and everything. But that's not going to happen. Sony's not going to let Game Pass be on there. Not anytime soon. Maybe on PS6. They're going to wait to see how this plays out over the next five or six years. But Sony's never going to let that happen. Microsoft put Game Pass on PlayStation. Maybe in six or seven years, maybe when the PS6 comes out, they'll reevaluate it. See if PlayStation is still on fire or if it's not. If it needs Game Pass, if it doesn't, I don't think it probably will, but you have to wait and see. Now, as far as big, big, big organizations coming in and buying up all these companies, I don't think that's good for the business. Now, let's say uh, Microsoft buys Ubisoft and maybe even Rockstar or something. And then let's say Sony buys Capcom and Sony buys Square. A lot of people don't have money to buy all three consoles. They can only afford to buy one, so they pick the one that has the most amount of games that they like. Now, some people can't afford to have all three, and that's great, but not everybody can, and that's not an option for a lot of people. If that happens, something like that happens, you're going to be limited on what you're going to be able to play. So you're going to almost have to play buy all three consoles if you want a big variety and that's not good it's good for these companies to have their own first first party studios but it's also good to have studios that has nothing to do with them that's on all three consoles and that's way better because then you still have the games you like on the console you prefer plus all the other games that are coming in that you can buy that are going to be on all three or at least the two big ones so even if Sony would have done this I don't think it would have been good for the game industry because it would have really really hurt Microsoft and I think it would have hurt Microsoft more than it hurt Sony because Sony's first party titles are a lot more elusive than the Xbox ones but it it wouldn't have been good for video gaming overall, I don't think. Bethesda is a giant company with a lot of good games that was really nice to see on all three. Now, as far as Nintendo, I think Nintendo is a little different. Nintendo, they might not have a Game Pass, but Xbox has proven in the past that they have a good relationship with Nintendo. And I can see some of these Bethesda games going to Nintendo. I can also see some of them not. So... It's all going to depend on how good that relationship keeps developing. Right now, I think it's a good relationship. But Microsoft might want to put some of these Bethesda games on. They might ask Nintendo, well, how about you bring Smash Brothers over or something like that. And I can't see Nintendo doing that. It's not a two-way street for Nintendo. So I don't know what's going to happen there. But I can more see some of these games going to Nintendo than I can to the PlayStation right now. So moving on to Monster Hunter Rise and Monster Hunter Story had a new a new digital event and uh, it was all right. It's about 26 minutes long. If you guys are interested in going watching it, it's still up on YouTube. It was all right. It went over Monster Hunter Rise, but the thing I thought the most interesting was 
it went over the new Monster Hunter Stories. Monster Hunter Stories looks really good. It looks like more of an adventure game instead of going out and just hunting the monsters. And uh, Monster Hunter Rise has a story to it too, but Monster Hunter Stories looks more of an adventure game. A lot more adventure to it and quest and going out and uh, stuff like that. And I really like adventure games, so Monster Hunter Stories speaks more to me. Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin. Now they showed it go into the village and uh, they showed uh, the riders going on the adventure, how they uh, do the co-op quest and uh, how you can do two-player co-op and go out and do this whole game, the, the whole adventure and co-op. Now that's really cool too because two people can play the adventure like not just go out and kill the monsters but do all the quests and the, the whole game basically in co-op and that's really cool. They announced the Deluxe Edition. The Deluxe Edition looks really cool. Now, if you order the real physical edition, you get a sticker set with it. You get an armor set. You get new hairstyles, new uh, clothing outfits. But the thing that was really cool, the Amiibo pack for it looks really cool. I really like the Amiibo pack for it. The Amiibos are my, some of the nicest Amiibos I've ever seen in this uh, Monster Hunter Stories one. That's a game I'm gonna try pre-order just as soon as I can. I already tried pre-order, it's not available at EB Games or anything yet if you want the physical edition. And then they went into Monster Hunter Rise. And Monster Hunter Rise, the biggest thing with this was the new demo coming out. Now the dude, the dude demo is a lot more to it than the other one. And uh, I recommend anybody downloading it and trying it and playing it. And it's really gonna tell you if you want to play a Monster Hunter game. Is this a, uh, this Monster Hunter Rise is the first one, to me, that feels like the next Monster Hunter Rise, like the next big Monster Hunter game. It was Monster Hunter Worlds that never came to Nintendo. There was a couple other mo smaller Monster Hunter games that went to Nintendo after Monster Hunter Rise, but they just felt like like not full AAA games, like the next Monster Hunter game. But this Monster Hunter Rise feels like the next big Monster Hunter game. It's also probably the best visually looking game on the Nintendo Switch. Like, it looks really nice. Now, they went over all the new fighting. They went over a lot more combat in it, and it looks really good. They went over some of the new... They showed some of the monsters they haven't announced yet. And they all look really cool. They went over some of the big monsters that are from the other games that are coming in to this one, and uh, it all looked really, really good. This game looks really good. I'm not a mo big Monster Hunter guy, but this game is speaking to me. Monster Stories is speaking to me even more. I'm getting that for sure. But this game looks really good. Now, the Rampage mode looked really cool, too. They went over the Rampage mode, and... Uh, this one's like you're defending your camp and everything. It'll look really rpg -ish and and uh, you're defending the camp so the monsters don't come in and destroy your camp and kill your people. And I really like that mode. That mode really, lo really looked cool too. I really, really enjoyed that. And they went over all your locations. There's five locations to go over in this game and uh, they all look cool. The locations look really unique and... Uh, this game's going to be really good, I think. And then they went over the DLC, and the DLC for this game is going to be free. And for a game like this, free DLC is uh, really cool where it's online, and uh, the DLC is coming. And uh, I think everybody's going to be really happy to get free DLC because a game like this, it keeps people kind of staying with the game going forward. So I, I think that Monster Hunter Rise, again, the free DLC is really cool. And they went over the Amiibos for this one as well. They're coming out the same day Monster Hunter Rise is coming out, same day the Switch is coming out. And the Amiibos look really cool for this one too. The Monster Hunter Stories one I think look a little bit cooler, but these ones look really unique too. And then the game I was most excited for this week that got announced, the thing that I was... Uh, really really excited for was the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game Shredder's Revenge now I went over some of the story for it and the story was cartoonish kind of like the old school Ninja Turtles the stuff I grew up with and I really love the art style I like that it's going with a Early, with the 80s cartoon, early 90s version of it, not like the newer newer version. Uh, it looks like it's all hand-drawn, and I really, really like that. But then they went into gameplay, and it's four-player beat-em-up, almost just like Turtles in Time, and uh, the art style for the gameplay looked really good, and the art style for the story looked really good, and it's about time 
we'll have to wait and see, but it looks like it's the first time we're going to get a new Ninja Turtles game since Turtles in Time. That's going to be really good, and Turtles in Time is one of the best games you'll ever play for the Super Nintendo, and I'm really excited for Shredder's Revenge. That's the top game that I'm looking forward to uh, going forward for beat em up games. Nickelodeon partnering with this and it looks really cool. I like how they, I like that it's four player beat em up just like the old school games and uh, let's just hope or have our fingers crossed that this is as good as Turtles in Time because we haven't had a really good beat em up. Not a Turtles one in a long time. If it's anything like, if it's as good as Streets of Rage 4, Streets of Rage 4 is really good too so hopefully we get another good old school beat em up as good if not better than Streets of Rage 4. And then Square Enix ne announced next week that they're going to have a new Square Enix presentation, almost like Nintendo Direct, going forward. And uh, this is a, a yearly thing. They're going to do this in quarters or however they're going to do it. But this is going to be how Square Enix goes forward with their presentations going forward. And uh, they announced that the 18th of March, 10 a.m. Pacific time to Eastern. And I'm really looking forward to see what Square Enix does for their first presentation. I, I want to see if they're going to announce any uh, Final Fantasy 16 stuff. That's what I'm really looking forward to. Maybe some more stuff. Maybe they announce a collector's edition for Final Fantasy 7 Remake for the PS5. Maybe new Tomb Raider game. We'll see what they announce. But this is what they're going to be doing going forward. I don't know how this is going to work out for E3 because everybody's going to have their own mini direct now. They're not. They're getting away from that. They don't really need E3 no more. And they're probably all going to have their own presentation. The only thing I hope for, if they do get rid of E3, is that they all get together and do it within one week. Because that was the best part about E3. Unless you actually went there and got to play all the demos and stuff. Like, that would be awesome. But as far as, like, watching it on YouTube, the best part of that was having it all in one week. And uh, getting all the uh, huge amount of announcements. You knew when it was going to be. You knew when all these announcements were going to be. You look forward to it all week. You look forward to the day of. You look forward to it all day. You got to see the presentation and then the next day where you're waiting for the new new presentation Nintendo's or Sony's or whoever you're waiting for you get to see all the YouTubers and stuff make their videos and stuff about what would happen the day before and uh, everybody and that and all people's excitement and stuff and that was really really cool to have all that in one week and I hope that they I hope that they keep that going forward like summer game fest was okay but it was just broken up over too long of a period and uh E3 was way better just because of it being in a one week thing. And I hope they keep it in one week. And that'll be Switch Station 32 back for another video. Don't forget to pick up your monthly PlayStation games for free. And there's some really good ones this month. It's Final Fantasy VII Remake. And that'll be Switch Station 32 for another video. If you liked it, leave a like and a subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. Comment, leave your comments. I love to interact with you guys, share the videos. It really helps.